Welcome to the Big Apple Roundtable. Um, I'm Neil Worden. I'm your Big Apple Roundtable host as the Roundtable Commissioner. Um, it's great to see a bunch of new people here. And without too much ado, I'm going to turn this over to Troop 777 if we have them in the house. And we have Colin Chang, who will be representing the Panthers Patrol and leading us through the opening. Are you here, Colin Chang? He is. All right. Colin, could you unmute? Yep. There you go. Luis, do we have a, a picture of a, a flag or something there behind us? Are we able to do that? There we go. I knew it was coming. When you're ready, Colin, you okay. are in charge. Uh, Scout, Scout Sloop. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Two. Uh, Scout sign. Scout oath. On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country and to obey the Scout law. To keep my to keep to help other people at all times. To keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. Scout law. A scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. Too. Well done. Thank you, Colin Chang. That was excellent. The uh, you're representing the Pink Panthers. They'll be very happy. So will. Uh, oh well, that's a joke for the 1970s. All right, so I'll just I'll keep that out of the way. We'll just move on directly to some program. So um, the idea of what we're doing on the the program for the next two months is dealing with uh, Zoom fatigue, which there was an entire article that. Um, our intrepid district director, Mr. Toldano, who's here, right, basically sent us about the whole idea of Zoom fatigue and how it was happening across the board with our youth. And it was an amazing experience to really look at that. And Luis kind of brought that to our mind too. And so we've kind of looked at what, how that's changing the way that we look at things after a year of Zoom, is there another way to do stuff? And all of the presenters over the next two months will be engaged in the idea of the battle for engaging program in the time of coronavirus. I'm very excited to have you all here. There's some new people and new faces. And without talking too much, I'd like to turn it over first to Epic NYC Journeys with PAC150's Damien Samarco. You are on. All right. Hello. Let's see if after uh, 11 or 12 months of Zoom, I can figure this out. <laughs> so let's do it. Let's screen share here. Okay. Can everybody uh, see me now? We can see you. We don't see your screen share yet. You probably haven't. Have you screen shared yet? Yes. There we go. We got you. All right. Cool. So as you were saying, the battle for engaging program in the time of coronavirus or how Pact 150 learned to stop worrying and love the city. And there goes my son. All right. So what was that? Okay. So after you know, the first couple months of, um, you know, March, April, May, getting toward the end. I think, as you said, Zoom fatigue, we were all getting to this point, especially having Cubs who are very hands-on. Our meetings are on Friday nights at 7.30. So by the time we, we got to there and they'd had a week of Zoom meetings and stifling weather and all that, everybody was, was pretty well cooked. So um, as we started figuring out what to do for the new scouting year, starting in September, um, we, we just all decided that Zoom meetings, virtual meetings really weren't going to cut it. And there was no option for in-person meetings as our, our uh, charter organization was having the building remodeled and was dead set against having anybody there. And the situation just really wasn't conducive to having indoor meetings at all. So we decided that we needed to come up with another solution. And uh, I spoke to Jason Toledano quite a bit about it. And I spoke to our leaders about it. And what we decided is we'd rather have uh, fewer, more impactful meetings than just a, another thing on the agenda. 
So what we decided to do is about once a month to do a field trip, right? To get people out and get the kids, get some exercise, get out of the house because by, even by September, a lot of kids had really not left their apartments. So we knew that they had to be socially distanced. They had to be meeting the GNYC requirements. Parents had to come with them because they are the Cubs. And we needed to do them in lower Manhattan because uh, pretty much all of our, all of our pack is in lower Manhattan. And we really wanted things that nobody has to get on mass transit and nobody has to, um, nobody has to get in cars or carpool or deal with any of that. All right. So with that, we started looking around and we came up with, a number of things that we wanted to do you know at first like everybody else we tried the virtual museum visits we wanted to do that in the real world right so we looked around the weather was great in september and we decided governor's island was a great place to go and this started our our um i guess our mission or our our sort of uh exploration of our own discovered undiscovered backyard right so you think it's right there governor's island but so many of us have never been and there's the longest continuously operating U.S. military installation in the country there. There are two forts. And then there's also just a ton of fun stuff to do. So you can see uh, our, our pack here around the cannons. So we got there. We got to have a nice boat ride. There's all these uh, slides and stuff for the kids to play on. There's a garden there. And just to run around out in the outdoors. And it is very socially distanced. There aren't that many people there. And best of all, it's free right so that was our first and then we had fall activity weekend which came up and by that time we were allowed to do some family camping uh or small activity uh small group camping so we headed up to alpine and there's there's famous joe d um so we went up and we had a pretty good turnout to just go and you know get the kids out and do some camping and stay <laughs> socially distanced so these kids are too close they are cousins um and there's mr steve did some fun stuff, you know, got out. So now we're starting to hit the rhythm again. We got a camping trip in, we got uh, some hikes in, you know, while we were at Governor's Island, we got to talk to a park ranger. So we started to check off on our adventures and our uh, requirements as well. As you start looking through the books, you know, we did want to get advancements in there. So we were trying to make sure that we were checking off things uh, as we were going along to make sure that kids were making rank. All right. Here, everybody was doing their quartermaster training and their first aid. Um, and then beyond that, you know, just having fun. The next thing that we discovered was uh, the Kintakoing Lodge has two, um, two badge eligible hikes, two patch eligible hikes within Manhattan. So we decided to do them. And since they were, you know, 10 to 20 miles each, they're pretty uh, long hikes, you know, eight, day, eight hour long hikes. We decided to start breaking them up into two parts because uh, it's just it's a long day for cubs and it's an even longer day for uh, the adults who are accompanying them. So we started out with the New York Historic Trail. Uh, here you see us at Federal Hall and the statue of George Washington. Like really fun. We opened it up. We had a really good turnout. You know, not an overwhelming amount of people because we did have to stay in groups of ten or fewer but everybody was there. Everybody had a great time and we got out and took a walk. So this would became our, um, our other October event as we checked out the historic trail. And, you know, we started to discover parts of the city again, that people just aren't really that familiar with. We went down to the battery and here we see the immigrant statue. Uh, here you see us posing with the, um, with the police anti-terrorism unit that just happened to be there. So we had a Q and A with them and a boom, again, boom, we checked off on a requirement of meeting with a first responder there. Um, and it just became a really fun way of getting people out, you know, touring the city and the streets are pretty empty. It's not like it used to be. So fun stuff here, the triangle shirtwaist fire, learning a little bit about the history and this, was effectively free, but if you want to get the patch, it's basically $6 once you earn both patches. So very low cost, very low impact, and everybody can show up. It doesn't really take much to do it. We were doing them on Saturdays. And in the past, you know, Saturdays are a tough time to get the kids and the families to come out because they have Chinese school or they have swimming or they have soccer and you really can't get them there, but all those things are canceled. So parents were actually very anxious to find something that they could do, right? So this became a great one here. Everybody took their masks off and held their breath for one moment to get a group photo. 
And what would a, a PAC 150 trip be without a stop in Chinatown for some dumplings? Um, another great thing that we did in previous years that I'd suggest to people, especially now being Black History Month, is we have the African Burial Ground National Monument in Lower Manhattan that you can stop in and you can earn the Junior Razor, uh, Ranger Badge for the kids. And this is an old photo back when they were tigers, but you can go through, there's the outdoor section, the indoor section, you get a bit of history and a bit of Manhattan and it's very low impact and again, free. Um, as summertime's coming up, we have the Lower East Side Ecology Center by us, and you guys can look to your local parks as well. What are the programs that they're going to be running that might be socially distanced and available that you can get the kids out and check off some uh, some advancement requirements? They're running a, a fishing clinic. So again, free. Everybody got to come and try that out. Uh, one, one thing that we've done in the past here as well that you may not know about, if you want to do an outside activity with, uh, with the scouts on the weekend is the New York City Parks Department has all of the trees and all of the parks actually mapped. So you can go and you can find your local uh, park. This is the park next to our charter organization, Columbus Park. And you can give the kids a blank map of the park and have them go try to identify all of the trees. And if that doesn't check off on some requirements, I don't know what does. Um, fun one here, how to use a compass. Let's get it outside. We do it at Alpine. Let's go do it in the local park on a Saturday and get the kids doing something outdoors. And they're going to be socially distanced as they move from place to place. Not always the right place, but they'll get there. Um, Hiking trails. I mean, these are NYC hiking trails. So these aren't even outside of the city looking around for stuff for the kids to do as you know, the, the warmer months come upon us to get people out and stretch the legs a little bit. Uh, in years past, we had done Operation Slumber at the Intrepid, but there are plenty of these outdoor um, activities that we've been looking to uh, for weekend things for the kids to do. Not free, not going to do the sleepover, but definitely a fun one. And it's right there. I mean, you can just go up and like look at it and do the whole walk around. So um, these are just the great kind of things. And remember, if you're going to the Intrepid, stop at Rudy's for a free hot dog. Uh, we did a visit to the NYPD mounted unit, which was really cool place. And, uh, you know, again, it's checking off with a first responder. It's more or less an outdoor activity. You can do it as a small group. And uh, if anybody remembers the book from when your kids were kids or when you were a kid, it's that old Robert the Rose Horse. This was based off Troop B down on Beach Street there. So that's a fun tie-in for them to actually see where one of the books they know what happened. Uh, and the bridge hikes, we always do these. This is a, a staple of our programming every year. And this is something that we'll keep doing is to, we, we are lucky enough to be by the Manhattan and the Brooklyn Bridge. So doing the look of the skyline going out and seeing all the lights come on in the city is a fun twilight one to do, or just do it during the day. The Manhattan Bridge is actually more fun than the Brooklyn Bridge because uh, one, there are fewer tourists and two, you can see the Brooklyn Bridge from the Manhattan Bridge. You get more of a shot of downtown from there. All right, uh, World Trade Center, that's another historic place to go and visit with, the, with an outdoor piece. Um, of course, there's my son who is always in shorts and never wearing a coat right there in the purple. Uh, doing your uh, Leave No Trace and a service uh, organization thing, uh, 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 sorry, a community service piece is a great thing. Go clean up a park, get outside, get the kids doing it, check off on some community service and work on your Leave No Trace and your outdoor code. And with all this stuff, remember uh, the, the motto for the Cub Scouts, do your best. That's really what we were trying to do is make the best of a bad situation, create programming that is engaging and doesn't become yet another obligation for these kids because we really just want them to have as much fun as possible and try to bring in as many people as we can. Sometimes the sleepovers, the campouts are too much for, um, for the families and we don't get big turnouts, but for these things we did just on a Saturday, we found a lot of people just wanted to share. All right, guys, so that's it for me. Neil, I, I don't know how we are on time. Turn it over, questions, I don't know what's next. You did a brilliant job, Damien. That was thank really, um, thank you. That was really thank inspiring. You. And I, you know, the other thing I have to say is like, I think in summation of what you're saying is, don't forget that we live in New York City, baby. I mean, this is the amazing place that we are. And we have, you know, and sometimes I think that we're all New Yorkers, we forget how amazing it is that we are in this city. And what you've done is kind of reminded us that there's amazing things in this city that we can still do in the middle of coronavirus. It's like you found the silver lining 
in the middle of all it. And that's where the epic journeys are coming from. The epic journeys of New York City. Damien, once again, thank you. I know you have to get off to a meeting and I appreciate everything you've done. All right, great. Thanks, guys. Yeah, I have another meeting to go to, but thank you very much. Great job. All right, so now um, I'm moving to a solution in the middle of New York City and in the middle of the winter. And um, I'm calling it uh, Winter is Coming. That's Game of Thrones, right? But in Tia Henry's world, in PAC 290 as the executive chair, she did something else. She called it Winter War. Why not? Let's have some fun. So Tia Henry, who is also a member of our uh, esteemed uh, roundtable team, and also the executive chair of PAC 290. I'm turning it over to you to show us what you got. We can't hear you right now. I'm not sure why. We can hear you now. I hear something. Okay, can you hear me now? We can. We can okay, sorry about that, guys. Yes. All right. So um, that was a very good presentation, by the way. Thank you very much for that. I liked it a lot. Um, so my name is Tia Henry. Uh, we are PAC 290, um, chartering out of PS 290. That's the neighborhood school here on the Upper East Side. Uh, we actually are a spinoff, I guess, uh, from, from PAC 662, also on the Upper East Side. So we actually uh, do do quite a bit of things together. And also the kids are familiar with each other because a lot of them used to be in scouts together sometimes too. Um, so as you guys know, we've had quite a lot of, we'll call it bad weather, right? It's been one of the tougher winters that we've had in quite a few years. And uh, having moved back from Texas, not, couple, not that long ago, like I'm totally, I'm a little spent right now <laughs> in the snow. Um, but, you know, I think as adults and even with the kids and stuff, that they're not getting like even snow days sometimes. Um, or, or most schools are not doing snow days. So when snow comes, it can really be like such a downer. We're just kind of looking at it. We're not really doing it. But the thing is, um, as the person who just presented mentioned, like we live in New York City, right? So there's all kinds of opportunity to take advantage of what's available to us. Um, and we're lucky enough to be really like right next to Central Park to walk there. Most of the kids can walk there. Um, so what ended up happening was, I won't actually take credit for it, um, from PAC 662, Miles is the is the leader there. Um, he reached out to us to ask us um, if we would want to participate as a group to hang out uh, in Central Park when we were expecting a storm. Um, and honestly, it was just like the best medicine for for everybody having a little bit of cabin fever. Um, you know, the kids kind of watching the snow but not really getting to play in it. Um, and frankly, just as an adult um, who's working from home myself, um, you know, as much as like we want to make time to do more things with our kids, it just doesn't always work out when it's just us, if that makes sense. But honestly, like there's like a social factor of like, oh, the kids are, oh, you know, the whole group is going, like we might as well go ahead. And so I think that helped us and I think other families push them to participate more than they maybe would have um, on a regular um, Saturday. So, I mean, long story short, we just had a really great impromptu um, event. Uh, what we did was we asked everyone if they wanted to attend, if they could bring, you know, a sled with them. We have extras. I, for some reason, have way more um, sleds than I should for the space that I live in. So I brought some with me and some other parents brought some extras with them as well. Um, and so we did some sledding. And then we also did um, a snowball fight. So we just basically had a war between the parents and our guardian, the adults and the kids. And they had a really, really good time. I, I didn't actually take a lot of pictures that day because we were playing, um, but I did actually, I do have a video. I did find one video that I found. Um, and I don't know, I don't know if I can, hold on. I think I can share my screen um, and I'll just play that really quickly. Make sure to guys. click share sound also. Oh, yeah. Uh, so if you click share screen again and then click share sound, it will play the sound. Uh, share sound. Okay, cool. I don't know how much sound there's going to be because it felt kind of. Yes. 
it's not super loud. But they're just basically like, you know, all the kids and all the family just spending time together. It's like terrible winter if you're looking out your window. Like, oh, it's terrible. Actually, it's just perfect. Like, so much pretension out the window, you know, like everybody's running around. Somebody brought like a, a snowball maker or something. Um, so like the kids had like a huge pot stockpile of snowballs. Um, I definitely got hit in the face a couple of times, even though we weren't supposed to do that, but <laughs> it's fine because I totally hit my kids in the face too, but not at the people's kids. Um, so yeah, we're just kind of just taking advantage of like those moments, right, that are available. And it's just really terrible, like the drudgery of like having to be inside a lot of the times. It's winter, it's gray, it's just not that lovely outside. But once you get outside with all the kids, I mean, they were out there for hours um, and they had a really good time. So, you know, hopefully if you guys have a park near you and actually that's what's great about New York, it's a city, but there are actually quite a few parks that we can take advantage of each of us in our own um, neighborhoods um, without having to get on public transportation or anything like that. Um, everybody's willing to share. So if you don't have a sled or some kids don't have sleds, other people have sleds, you know, um, I think we have a couple more snowstorms coming up here before this is out. So um, I encourage you guys to see if this is something that might be interest you just a couple hours on a Saturday morning to, uh, you know, reconnect with the outdoors and with the, and the rest of the kids in your, in your um, pack or troop. I think that's it. Thank you. Very well done to you. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Punxsutawney Phil, you know, in, in Pennsylvania said that, yeah, we got about, you know, five more weeks and a lot of snow coming. So and clearly we had some snow today, so you're right on. And I think, you know, once again, that speaks to being New York City and also finding, you know, it's a matter of perspective. It's how we look at this world. At this point, it's how we see it. If the snow comes down outside our window and we decide that it's too difficult to go outside, then that's exactly the experience that the scouts get. That's the spirit that the Cubs get. It's what we give to them. And if we can inspire them in some other way, like what you just did, which was making a winter war that looked like believable fun i wanted to get hit by a snowball i mean that's that's the way we do it right that's the way we make an engagement that's like we make a battle and speaking of i'm going to segue in here to uh scout uh to assistant scoutmaster greg peterson of troop 777 and he's doing his own version of the battle for engaging program in the time of coronavirus the socially distance outing of scouting so uh, he's doing it, and he's going to tell us all about it. I'm going to turn it over to you, Mr. Peterson. You're on. Thank you. I'm also joined by uh, Anthony Ravello. Um, and a little bit of background on Anthony. He was our senior patrol leader at the time of when COVID hit. And it's a lot of his ideas, his inspiration, and his leadership of the PLC that drove what we're going to uh, share with you. He's when we're going to be doing this uh, together. And then uh, even in the midst of all this, he created his Eagle Scout project. He um, uh, had his border of view, uh, turned 18, and he's now an assistant scoutmaster with us as well. But we're gonna go through this uh, a bit together and share with you some of these ideas. So as you all know, you know, early March COVID hit and the restrictions came into place. And uh, Anthony and the, and the PLC immediately moved us into a virtual Zoom meeting to begin with. And we let folks know that we were gonna follow the guidelines of the BSA, that we were gonna try to do as many digital uh, and in-person events as we can. A lot of the stuff that we had lined up was being canceled. Um, and this is just a quote from our first um, announcement to the parents. We're gonna be safe. Uh, number one priority is keeping you informed and we also wanted every single time we did this to still offer hope. We're in March and we're like, look, whitewater rafting in June, we don't know what's gonna happen yet, maybe we'll go. And summer camp in August, maybe we'll, you know, maybe we'll get there. And Anthony had the PLC every meeting, you know, looking at, you know, can we do this virtually? Um, uh, let's segment each of what we're doing if we're gonna be doing this in Zoom in, in 15 to 20 minute increments because we'll lose them if it's you know, any longer uh, than that. And then as the advancement chair of the troop, what I did is I put an individual report together for every scout about these are the requirements that you could do in merit badges at home and here are the counselors you could contact. Um, here are the rank requirements of everything that you need to do um, from scout through first class for the most part. 
And we try to get all of our families to move to Scoutbook. Uh, that is still a work in progress. Uh, we've got a number of them who are there. But the first thing we did is I asked all the scouts to just take a picture of what was in the back of their book. And then we, you know, loaded everything up into Scoutbook so that we could, you know, track it. And for the most part, you know, we're doing pretty well with respect to that. But one of the key things is in every single meeting, we had to have fun. And Anthony, why don't you unmute yourself and talk a little bit about our fun. Yeah, sure will, sure will. All right, by the way, I'm Anthony Ravella. Uh, once again, as Greg said, I am in Troop 777 and I'm the most recent uh, assistant scoutmaster uh, for the troop. So uh, as you guys probably know with your scouts, right, uh, they like to have fun. And while doing rank, rank, uh, rank advancement and skills are crucial to their understanding of scout topics, we also need to let them have a break. Uh, sometimes that includes going out and doing stuff. However, with COVID, we weren't allowed to do that. So we had to resort to some fun methods. So we did a lot of games. Uh, as Greg shows you here, uh, or okay, back to here, um, we ha did a game called Kahoot which was basically a fun trivia game that you can play online. And actually, Greg has a version that he's created for you guys to play if you guys want to just see what it is. Um, and I think you guys will really enjoy it. So if you know it already, uh, don't spoil it, but you know how uh, it, it can be very uh, simple, but also fun at the same time. Uh, it doesn't take too much to make it, which means that scouts can actually make it. And we had a bunch of younger scouts actually make the games, not only so that they could play it and have fun, but they could see behind basically the process and you know kind of learn how to do uh group projects with other scouts um so we're, we're, we're not going to take you through all of this but right now everybody yeah. goes to these zoom meetings and you multitask you're doing something right. else all of you are doing right. something else right now other than listening to us so now you're going to do something else that we're going to direct you to so just pull out your phone go into your browser and tap kahoot.it that's it kahoot.it yep. put this pin number in and put your name in there and Luis is do, our yeah. first player. We're going to wait till we get a couple more players here. And then we're going to play a couple rounds of the game just so you can see what it's like. And this is the very first game that Anthony ran and our very first meeting with Nate Russo, one of our scouts mm -hmm. um, and around scout um, basic scouting. And this, this one is actually really nice because you can do it about any certain topic. So for example, certain weeks we were learning about citizenship in the nation uh, or American uh, cultures, which we also learned about. So we had qu uh, cahoots or we also did jeopardies that were based on those certain skills that we learned to both reinforce it as well as subconsciously put it into the minds of the scouts. And they think they had a lot of fun while doing it. So it's a mix of education as well as you know recreation. So I think it went well, really well. Right. So we get, we got 10. I think we got enough. I'm just going to yeah, start the good. game. So what you're going to do is on your, your computer screen, watch this screen for the question, but watch your phone because then you're, that's where you're going to put your answer in. And if you've never done this before, accuracy is most important. Speed is second. Okay. The questions will come up on this screen, but your answers you will put in on your phone. So we'll get exactly. started. Scout rank quiz. Do a good turn daily is the, and here are your multiple choice right. potential responses. Click yep. that one on your, on your phone. And then you get a countdown timer. Three, two, one. All right. And the answer, ooh. Yeah, we got to brush up on our, yeah. on our, our <laughs> scout lore. Here's the next one. And then the points come up. And so Andy did it the quickest and he was accurate. All right, well done. Once everybody logs in, it, it skips skips to it so that's the the answer is reminder to do a good turn daily and crispin roberts moving up andy's in second place you can see how this builds kind of momentum with the scouts they're having a lot of fun there's a lot of trash talking that goes on during this as well playful though but yeah there is All 
All right, nicely done, guys. So that'll give you that's the the basics on on the on the Kahoot. Yep. Do you yeah, guys we, are we back at the regular screen? Uh yeah, I think we are. Okay. Yeah. So you might want to just talk a little bit about Jeopardy, and then we'll get to the rest of the, the programming things we did. Of course, yeah. So another game we did, I think I mentioned it, was Jeopardy. This game took a little bit more time to plan. So uh, for the first two few times, it took either me or another of the older scouts to do it. However, uh, eventually, once scouts started getting the hang of it, we got the younger guys to even participate in making them. And what we would do is we would share a screen like this on Zoom, and we would have uh, the scouts press the raise hand option or type something into the chat to see which one got the answer first after we, I finished reading the question. And then they could say the answer and get a certain amount of points. So it was very fun because everyone could participate no matter your skill level, because there are different categories. Each category could pertain to something maybe that you know specifically, as well as skills you learned that day. And overall, we just had a really fun time with it. Yeah, and every, every meeting had a game component at the end. And I would tell you that uh, even the adult leaders were allowed to play uh, if the scouts let us, uh, and nobody wanted to leave the meeting. If our meeting was running over, sometimes, you know, 15, 20 minutes, people wanted to stay to the end to see what uh, the game was. Right. So then we started uh, the merit badge series. Um, we created uh, different merit badges that um, our counselors would come. They would do presentations. We found a lot of the presentations online. It's amazing what troops around the country will, will deposit there. We took the merit badge counselor would then put it together. Uh, we would do um, Zoom breakout meetings for each of the merit badges. And then um, the scout would have to make an individual appointment to finish off the requirements. It wasn't enough just to come to the meeting and sit in a Zoom room in order to get the badge. They needed to uh, follow up with the counselor. We were even able to, to do wilderness survival over three consecutive meetings and then the overnight. Um, you know, most troops do wilderness survival in the summer. 777 likes to do it in the winter. I don't know why, um, but uh, it was it was crazy. We've got ice in our veins, I guess, but in the good yeah. way. Yeah. And then maybe cover uh, the, the speaker series. We started bringing uh, speakers in once a month. Yeah. So we've had basically the idea to not only do rank advancement and skills, but to bring, you know, specialized people into talk about certain things that we either need for rank advancement, general rank advancement, or specific merit badges that we were doing at the time. So for example, one of the first ones we did was we brought in uh, Father Nolan, who works at Blessed Sacrament Church, um, and he taught us about drug and alcohol awareness uh, in early May. Um, this was had to do a lot with the rank advancement that many of the younger guys had to achieve between second and first class. And uh, not only did he talk to us about what uh, drug and alcohol awareness is, but he also let us answer questions. And the scouts actually were given some time to come up with these really nuanced, great questions. Um, and that was really, really helpful for both the scouts as well as the adults that were there because they could now see that their children were really, really learning and attaining, uh, retaining the information rather than just kind of writing it down and, and memorizing it to pass for the, for the next rank. Um, so that's stuff we saw throughout all of these. In the astronomy one, we saw a lot of really great questions, really eager scouts. Um, and we made sure to make it eager and interactive by not only having the speaker talk, but allocate a lot of time to discussion, not even just questions, but just if scouts want to say stuff, uh, if they have many, any opinions on the things that we're talking about. We did that too. Um, one of my favorites uh, was the Leah Gardner Gilliam uh, one, which was, she is a producer on Broadway. And she talked a lot about um, American culture, specifically the African-American experience in both New York and the United States. And at the time that was very crucial for a lot of the uh, scouts to kind of wrap their minds around um, because of what had been happening throughout the country. And I think that that's something really important that we, you know, uh, kind of focused on, as well as all these other ones, was letting the scouts have a voice in these speaker series, um, which I think is crucial. And then uh, we started to, our, our community service historically has been uh, a, a monthly soup kitchen with, um, with our sponsoring organization. And because the kitchen was shut down, we were not able, the kitchen didn't shut down, but we weren't able to, to work it anymore because of the uh, being in contact with, with the people. And so um, PS7 um, reached out and said that their librarian needed us to record books on videos for K through three. And uh, I think the troop recorded like something like 40 videos. Uh, and one of our scouts actually got the reading merit badge because he recorded over eight books um, on, on a video. And then they would play these to the kids because they needed to have something for them to do and, and read stories. Uh, we also shifted our service to outside, very similar to 
our previous speaker, uh, we started these uh, participating in one block cleanups and we're now doing these monthly um, to, 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 um, to do more cleanup in the, on the Upper West Side. And Anthony, why don't you talk about the, the unique thing? This is the Philmont Borough, which I think um, Aaron Cooper, one of our assistant scoutmasters brought to us. Yeah, so we basically, Aaron, Aaron brought this cool idea up where at Philmont, they have these, uh, you know, different types of animals. They have burrows, they have bison, uh, they have chickens. And what you can do is for $50 or maybe less, depending on the type of animal, it varies. But for a certain amount of money, you can get a Zoom call with one of the animals, as well as a trainer who will talk about the animal, which was we thought was both really cool, also kind of hilarious. But we did it and the scouts were super into it. Uh, they we, they basically were able to see the animals on the on the uh, the pastures and ask any questions about both the animals and Philmont uh, to the instructor, which I thought was great. So um, you know, it's it's also as someone said, uh, you know, in the chat, yes, it's better to see it on a computer uh, where you can see it from a distance rather than seeing it up close and maybe get kicked. So I think that this is probably the optimal way to learn about it for a lot of the kids who might not be able to because they live in New York City. Um, and then, and then some of our more senior scouts started to do a cooking demos. We've had we had cooking demos at home on the beach and in the backyard, all helping people think about how to do better Dutch oven cooking. Um, so some of them did them live, some of them recorded uh, YouTube videos, um, and then one of the, th the key things is we introduced a birthday celebration for every scout and scouter. If we were in person, we brought cupcakes. If we were on Zoom. Uh, we wanted to make sure that um, the things that we normally would do if we were meeting in person, we could get to. And this was a, a huge thing and quite frankly, quite a surprise uh, for some of the adult scouters. Um, we had some of their moms uh, send us all the photos that they never were, you know, wanted to see anywhere um, in their childhood uh, and their scouting careers. So we had a lot of fun um, surprising some people there. Uh, this is a shot just from two weeks ago at one block. You know, when we first did this, I think we had six. I think we had like 18 people and it just continues to grow. Um, and then when we, when, when our Kia was summer camp in Philmont uh, were canceled, uh, we pivoted because we learned that uh, Summit, the Bechtel Scout Reservation, Camp Justice had a permit in West Virginia to operate. So we shifted and um, we followed the BSA guidelines, but then we added, added mandatory testing. Everybody had to have a COVID test. Uh, we created a transport bubble, masks, gloves, everything down to uh, West Virginia. And we had a week of summer camp and the older scouts that were going to Philmont actually did a week of high adventure uh, whitewater rafting. Again, masks, sanitation, et cetera. I think Summit put seven, something like 7,000 kids through the program without one COVID issue uh, last summer, which is pretty remarkable. We also then shared the GMYC Tamar Go program and then another council, Mason Dixon, they did a lot of virtual summer camps, which were very well uh, uh, attended. Uh, we also shared the TMR virtual lecture programs, which frankly, I find fascinating. And then the TMR historical ward virtual visit. The result was um, we had 35 scouts participate in either live or virtual programs throughout this time. And then Anthony handed off uh, through their, our troop elections to the next PLC who said, we're the only thing that's keeping these kids connected. Uh, there's nothing else for them to do. Let's continue to do our meetings you know, throughout the summer. We also had a virtual court of honor and crossed over our Weebelows. And then as scouts had merit badges that they needed to, to um, show or demonstrate or do, uh, we had an aviation contest as somebody was working on aviation merit badge. So trying to uh, integrate what the scouts were trying to do uh, into our, our meetings and our events. This is just a little quick shot of Summit, the whitewater rafting and uh, the scouts arrival at camp. Uh, I'm also the, the cooking merit badge a, a counselor and we had a we had a, tr a challenge with getting the trail hikes done so we had every scout on a simultaneous day we picked july 12th they were going to go with their families masked etc and we're going to do simultaneous hikes with the the trail cooking and then facetime with us to see what it is that they were cooking and, and sharing so we did that not every group could get out on that day and so some people did a, um a little bit later and then anthony we shifted the meetings Yes, we did. Um, so we shifted the meetings uh, to use some of the daylight hours that were left in the year before daylight savings came in November. Uh, and we used that to go to Central Park uh, to do dis socially distanced meetings. Um, so 
we basically did a lot of personal fitness since we were stuck in the house for like five months before then. We also did some troop leadership skills because we were able to gather both uh, younger scouts and older scouts in an environment where they could learn. Uh, we did that for three consecutive weekends. Um, we also did an in-person court of honor in October, um, which we had to, you know, wrangle around a lot of things, including a city permit. Um, so, but it did work out. So that was amazing. Um, we also had orienteering, uh, which was basically using maps and compasses in an outdoor environment, which I find, as well as many other scouts would agree, is a lot easier to do than on a computer. Um, now, some scouts even created some cool videos uh, to both use in live meetings as well as more often um, in the online meetings. For example, we have uh, scouts uh, like Ryan and Robbie who created videos where they would talk about how to use fires with wet wood. Uh, we had scouts make videos about how to build winter shelters, uh, so like igloos, and they would basically do it in their backyard or do it wherever they were or wherever they could get access to that kind of stuff and then post it on YouTube and then they would share it with us um, so that both people who wanted to see it on YouTube could see it, as well as the people in our own troop could see it. So all in all, I think we've had a very successful summer. So our outcomes, um, we've got record parent engagement now in terms of attending board of reviews. They sort of now get the fact that the only way that they can, um, their, their own scout can advance is if they're participating. We had 272 individual awards at our October Court of Honor, which is a record for our, our troop. And then uh, this Wednesday, we have another one, Virtual Court of Honor, and it's, we got 169. Two kids, dis scouts discovered their congressional award, and they're now working on that. We had four Eagle projects created and executed uh, in person, uh, one virtual Eagle Scout ceremony, and we've got uh, three others that are being deferred, hopefully until we can do them in, in person. And despite the fact that we lost seven scouts during the pandemic, we were able to keep five in the program uh, by introducing them through Be a Scout to new troops in the states that they moved to. And we're hopeful, we're keeping them on our, our uh, Zoom invites and our meeting invites. Uh, we don't know if these moves are permanent, but we're hoping it, that if they do come back to New York, we can capture them. And during this period, we're, we're still net up five scouts um, in the program. We brought hiking back. Um, we did a tent and transport survey because of the, the rules about what you can do and how you can do it. We can't do anything without a lot of vehicles. And to our surprise, there were a lot of folks who had started to rent vehicles and are continuing or buy vehicles because they needed to get around and uh, they weren't happy or frankly, um, they didn't feel some of the public transportation was safe. So we got a lot more cars in the troop uh, for one that's based in Manhattan. And we went out and bought a lot of one and two person tents because everybody has to tent by themselves. Uh, we used the, um, the REI sale over Labor Day and we got these two person tents for like 115 bucks a pop. Um, because now we have to have the parents on the trips, um, we actually created a program for the parents on what gear to pack. So one of our Eagle Scouts did this and um, we learned that even parents when it's spoon fed to them do not learn and do not listen, because there were a lot of cold people <clears throat> on the first trip in November, and it was only 33 degrees. Uh, the, the wilderness survival um, had a wind chill of six in January, and the one this uh, was just this past weekend had a wind chill of eight, but everybody was toasty. Um, the parents who came, two of them decided to get into it, and they built their own outdoor shelters and slept in them, and one went and just slept without an outdoor shelter, uh, just outside. And we had six parents on the, the winter sports camp out. We keep giving them hope. Uh, we've got horsemanship coming up uh, next month. Uh, we're trying to find a place where we can do overnight camping and ride horses. We're still working on that. We have whitewater rafting in June. We'll see what state will allow us to raft and does it meet the Boy Scout and the COVID guidelines. And we do have film on and, and lined up for this summer uh, and then hopefully sea base next year. <clears throat> One of the things that we did is we went way over the top on the Dutch oven food when we were bringing parents on the trip here. This is uh, a braised short ribs. And what we decided to do is make sure that they ate better than they ate at home. So they would want to come camping with us and they'd like the camaraderie. And so far we've been successful because we get people who really had never camped before now coming back because they want their, their, their kids to come and they're bringing siblings too. Because uh, you can't just leave everybody at home because one, one, uh, one scout needs to camp. This is from this weekend. We broke out the old Klondike Derby sled that um, 
you know, we got invited to the Bronx Klondike Derby three years ago. We still have the sled. We uh, put it together. Not only does it rip down the hills at Alpine, we have the place to ourselves. You can also transport gear in this Klondike sled. There's nothing worse than trying to hike from the parking lot um, with your gear. And so this worked out really well. Some of our challenges, look, some of our scouts are still zoomed out from virtual school and they struggle to get to meetings. So Anthony and the team continue to try to figure out what fun and games components we can add to it. We're trying to maximize our outdoor events, even in the winter, as our previous speakers have told you, indoor and Zoom just doesn't cut it. We are concerned with our sponsor organization. Um, you know, their in-person limit in their building is 25. We, we have 50 people show up to meetings. Uh, we're also concerned about the ventilation. So we're still doing as much as we possibly can out, outdoors. And we're recruiting um, and onboarding is still a bit of a challenge um, and unless they can come on an, an activity with us. We had a couple of scouts join at the beginning of the pandemic and we're still trying to connect with them. And then we had some super scouts, scouts who were involved in every single thing. We're constantly asking, you know, what can I do? What else you know, can I do to help? And um, they're not as engaged right now because they're not having the in-person you know, events that we have. But if you've seen our troop class B shirt, what doesn't stop you makes you stronger unless it's a bear, bears will eat you. And that's our public service announcement from the troop. Um, we didn't let COVID stop us. Um, we're continuing to adapt. We appreciate the opportunity to share these thoughts with you, but we also appreciated hearing from some of the other folks because I think we're gonna tee up a snowball fight and we're definitely going to Governor's Island. Oh, yes, and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I think the best thing we can do is continue to share with each other. Yep. Just like Greg said, thank you guys, yeah. Wow, uh, Greg and um, Anthony, that was brilliant. I think it was like a tutorial in how a troop runs their program in um, the age of coronavirus. I mean, really, an incredible you program and also um, uh, just incredible solutions. I think all of us, you know, we're taking notes and I'm taking notes from all of you here. This is exactly what a round table is supposed to be doing is giving us all ideas of what we're doing. So thank you. That was genius. I'm the, I'm the, uh, advancement guy for my troop, uh, which my scoutmaster is here, David Russell. And, um, I feel totally humbled. I feel like I have no comparison to the excellence that you guys have done. So I'm taking notes right now on how you guys are achieving it. Thank you I, very much. I would tell you, Neil, that a lot of this was driven by the scouts at the very early on. They're like, we're not going to let this get, get us down. And then we, as the adults are like, how do we continue to enable what they want to do? And how do we do that? Um, I, I hand my hats off to, to Anthony. He's the one who created some of the, the early, you know, Jeopardy games and things. And he really drove us through this. And now, you know, the next, you know, two groups of SPLs have, have taken it on from there. So it's been wonderful. Yeah. And this guy has been all active. So it's, it's definitely on. Can I chime in here? Yeah. Go ahead, John. So, you know, one thing that I've been, I, I understand that you guys have been doing a lot and, that's one thing that 664 has been doing too. We've been trying to do as much as we can with these kids. We, we've gone camping. We um, try to do some day events as much as we can with the parks. And you know, I, I don't know if Louise is still on, but she, she probably, I think she has, a, I don't know if she's still on. But um, one thing that I wanted to ask is I understand we were doing stuff with our units, but have we thought about doing any, anything district wise? Well, it's a good thing you asked that, Joshua, because uh, our intrepid district director, Jason Toledano, has the next section about GNYC News uh, and um, all of the response to that from uh, the Big Apple Roundtable and what they're doing. And then also we're going to have a um, Scouters of the Roundtable um, discussion, open forum with our commissioner, uh, Luis, at the end here. So you guys can bring all that up. Joshua, bring up your question again, and we'll talk about it some more. I'm going to turn okay. it over right now to you, Jason, so that you can give us some of the answers to that question. It's all yeah, yours. I can answer that question before going into my uh, my presentation. Um, so the, um, the logistics of having unit uh, activity and having uh, a program stay within a community um, is, is different than having a program where communities continually collide and having in-person district activity. Um, and the district committee, which is the administrative body that that uh, puts on all district activities like the, the camper and whatnot, 
uh, recently voted that we are not looking to have in-person program until the spring to prevent the combining of these communities. Insofar as troops meet together or, or units meet um, together, that's one step towards keeping, uh, you know, insular is the wrong word, but communities that already associate with certain people together and you create additional risk when you start mixing more communities. Um, so the district committee, not myself, not one person voted to not have in-person programs until, uh, until late spring, at which point we'll reevaluate where the situation is with, um, you know, w with the world and whatnot. Um, the rest of my, and that, that information went out in, a, in an email blast to the whole district uh, just about a week ago. Um, so that information has been available. Um, so I uh, notoriously have a boring uh, presentation because it's mostly just um, talking about general things going on. So I figured I would attempt to spice it up just a little bit. And if this fails miserably, then I can stop. And what I'll do is I'll say my boring spiel while playing uh, uh, Alice's Restaurant by Arlo Guthrie. And if I can't do this simultaneously, then we can all laugh at my failure together. Um, but uh, let's, let's give this a go. So if you can all hear me, then this is working. Neil, you're the only person I can see. So not if my, my audio works. Okay. So just like normal, all of the <clears throat> coronavirus updates for the council are are available on our website, which the link is right here to get most of the uh, updates. Uh, Governor Cuomo announced last week that summer camps will be able to open this summer. And this is an extremely promising step in the direction for 10 Mile River and uh, Cub World. Uh, as changes occur in the pandemic, you can expect us to provide updates to our summer camp procedures. And we'll announce this information as it becomes uh, available and accurate. Um, just so you all know the standard procedures for, honestly, this is, this is incredibly difficult. So I'm gonna, <laughs> that would have continued on for like 17 more minutes if I didn't, uh, if I didn't stop doing that. Uh, thanks, Kim. Uh, always trying to endear people to me. Uh, so the, uh, <laughs> the, the, the COVID zones are still in effect. Uh, if you live or work uh, within an orange zone and that person is uh, attending in-person activity, only 10 people maximum are allowed at that event. For yellow zones, <clears throat> only 25 people are allowed in person. And for um, uh, non-specific zones, uh, the, the restriction is 50 people. For the link to find out where the zones are, there is currently only a yellow zone um, existing in Manhattan, and that's in Washington Heights, which you could take a look at this um, uh, link that I provided. Um, but it seems that um, most of our in-person gatherings are not, gather or not having more than 25 people um, as it is, so this doesn't pose uh, to be too much of a restriction. Uh, as we begin to open up more, I would like to remind you all that um, your unit has to have an active uh, restart scouting safely plan, which um, a, <clears throat> a uh, sample plan that outlines uh, COVID protocols um, uh, has been doled out to all key unit leaders, and I'll be sending it out again this week as we prepare to open up. Um, all you have to do is put in the information of the specific place you're meeting, um, <clears throat> where you're meeting, uh, how many people uh, you expect to have at that meeting, um, and uh, the date, um, which is the same as, uh, as it had been before. I'd like to mention some uh, virtual program opportunities that we have uh, coming up in our district, uh, as well as um, branching out to other places. So the Big Apple District is putting on a merit badge rally on Saturday, April 10th. Uh, we just moved this program date to be on the 10th from the 27th. Um, because of conflicts with school uh, being let out for breaks, assuming that that might cause a difficulty with some of our units, as well as I believe Passover is occurring the weekend of 27th, so we don't want to conflict with any uh, family events that are occurring. Um, that email went out a week ago to everyone, April 10th. For all of our uh, programs, 
um, you can find them on our website, on the calendar of our website. I also recommend that you take a look at uh, different councils' websites um, and their calendars because there are other councils that are having merit badge rallies or um, simply merit badge events. Um, and it's a good opportunity to um, see how scouting is run in different places uh, in America, as well as sort of, uh, you know, compound the amount of program that you are able to, uh, that, that is available to you. Uh, we've had many scouts uh, successfully uh, participate in different virtual summer camps around uh, America, as well as different merit badge rallies around America. So I just sent links to three nearby, geographically nearby councils um, that have upcoming merit badge events, but you can look on the calendars of any, any council and see what their, what their program is looking like. Um, in spite of knowing the names of every council, I recommend you just type in a city or a geographical location into Google and then type BSA council after that and you should see about four or five things populated um, to see the different uh, councils that are there. And you can see the different program that they have available for all programs, whether it's Scouts BSA, Venturing, uh, Cub Scouts, or Sea Scouting. For adult program we have coming up, on March 6th, we are having Cub Leader Training at BHS at Brown Harris Stevens in Manhattan, as well as March 20th, we're having Scoutmaster Training in person at Brown Harris Stevens. Um, this is not program for youth, this is program for adult, um, and it is a significantly lower number of, uh, of participants, uh, which is why this program will be in person and uh, there is COVID safety protocols um, in place. To sign up for those events, you can find those on our website. Um, and those are the updates for um, some different virtual programming as well as um, you know, general council updates. Does anybody have any questions about what I've spoken about? Uh, about how I learned to play guitar, or uh, not that, don't ask me about that. Uh, hey, uh, Jason. Uh, uh, in, in general. Yes, Josh. Um, Suffolk has a lot of numerous in-person events coming up, so if anybody wants to attend, um, I can give you the contact info for the Suffolk County, uh, the Benjamin Helmets District uh, District Commissioner, and if you guys want to attend their event. Um, they they are very, very welcoming of city, city units, so. What is the event? Uh, they, they, they have some camp breeze and they have, it's all listed on their website. I don't know the exact event, but I know some of it is camp breeze. They, they have a day cubbery at Baiting Hollow Scout Camp. Um, and they also have weekend events where you can bring your troop out there. And they, they're also gonna um, have where you can rent out their tracks for a Pinewood Derby. Great, thank you, Josh. I received uh, a question in the chat uh, about uh, swimming. Do we have access to any private pools? Uh, currently the BSA uh, in, in New York doesn't have a formal relationship uh, with pools. Um, we have had history of, of using uh, uh, different pools like at, uh, I believe Columbia Secondary School uh, is a school that had a pool that we used to have access to uh, occasionally. Um, uh, some folks have uh, offered uh, access to um, pools that were in apartment complexes. Um, we are currently very interested in, uh, in finding an opportunity for uh, access to private pools, um, as well as um, promoting uh, pools for unit usage and district usage. Uh, one uh, under underrepresented uh, issue that we have in uh, Manhattan scouting is our access for our scouts to learn how to swim uh, besides going to summer camp. And there's an additional cost barrier there, which is the cost to, to go to summer camp as another barrier to swimming. We wanna make this more available. We're constantly looking for opportunities to um, expand this. Um, we do have uh, a somewhat strong lead of a, of a private pool uh, in Astoria, Queens. Once that once there's a, a greater formalized um, procedure behind that, we'll make it public. But until, uh, until then, um, I welcome any feedback about opportunities you might have for discounts or you know links to uh, pool access. Yes, Neil. I actually, it's funny that you brought that up. I'm actually trying to negotiate something with Riverbank State Park 
and they've been working with us a little bit. But right now, of course, everything got closed for COVID. But that's not a private pool, but it is it is an access that just came up in the last couple of years. And you and I should talk some more about that because maybe we could make it more of a BA district thing. Certainly, it doesn't Neil, have what private pools, you know, we could we could rent out a public pool um, depending on the circumstance. So any any access to pools, I, I would welcome that conversation. Thank you. Neil, you've you've been talking to them about the Olympic sized pool they have up there. The big one. Yeah, the indoor and the outdoor one. It actually began with an outdoor conversation and it happened. I was trying to do exactly the thing that Jason's talking about. We had problems with swimming this summer right. trying to right. get it done. And then uh, basically the guy turns out that he's an ex um, life scout oh. and, and he uh, the guy who runs the pool is the operations guy. And um, and he. I literally got to it. They scheduled, they had all sorts of mistaken things, just like COVID-19 everywhere, um, information that was wrong. And we got there, we literally arrived and they had closed the pool uh, the next day. And they were like, they were closing, closing everything down and it wasn't available. But then the plan was if everything stayed low in terms of our new cases, they were going to open up that Olympic pool inside. And then what happened is that, of course, the cases bloomed again in October and everything got shut down. But the process is still going on and I'm still trying to negotiate something with that. So that's the answer to that. Great. Great. So, Jason, in answer to your question, I, I thought that um, the Suzuki method for beginning guitar included um, Alice's Restaurant and uh, and <laughs> Jimi Hendrix's um, Star Spangled Banner. So that's where I thought you'd got all your stuff from. You yeah, know? that was that was uh, less uh, two actually. It's very very beginning stuff before even they taught you what the names of the strings were. Excellent stuff. It's amazing method. So fast. Okay, so um, moving on, uh, it's now. Our commissioner, our esteemed commissioner, uh, Luis Feliciano Maldonado, you are in charge and take over the scouters of the round table. Here we go. Well, thank you everybody for joining us. This is our first round table of the year. Uh, and uh, I want to thank you for being here. And I, we just want to start after those three great presenters that we had, plus Jason tried to play guitar. Uh, we want to see if you have any questions or any feedback, uh, anything pressing that you have on top of your mind?